Hi everyone, welcome to another weekly Forex forecast for the week ending May 8th, 2020. My name is Justin Bennett with Daily Price Action, and in today's forecast, we're going to talk about the Euro USD, the Pound USD, the dollar versus the yen, the Australian dollar against the US dollar, as well as gold or XAU USD. Markets are a bit indecisive as the world's reserve currency, the US dollar, continues to move in a range. So we'll talk about that as well as the breakout potential from the euro and also the dollar yen. I'll also talk about a potential opportunity on the Australian dollar and also the latest consolidation on gold. So let's get to it right now. Quick disclaimer that today's video is for educational purposes only. All views are my opinion and are not intended as investment advice. Forex is a high reward, high risk business, and you should not trade with borrowed money or money you cannot afford to lose. See the description of this video for the full disclaimer. Before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also click the bell icon so you get notified every time I post these videos. Also check out the join button where you can become a member of this channel and receive five to 10 analysis videos from me every single week. I'll show you the key levels I'm watching and how I'm approaching that pair. So you'll get trade ideas from those videos, but you're also going to learn how I trade price action and that's going to make you a better trader. So first up we have the Euro USD and at first glance, things look a little bit crazy for the pair. So we're looking at the four hour time frame right now and you can see where last week we did see a rally above that 108.90 area. So you can see where this level served as resistance through here. However, late last week, we got this massive surge above that area. Now, as of Friday's close, it's unclear whether or not this is simply a run on stops. Okay, so stop losses that had developed above this area, or if this is something more. But what I can say is that right now the Euro USD is caught in this sideways range. Because even though we saw this massive late week rally, the pair is still range bound between 110 and 107. And that's really no surprise because when we look at the monthly time frame, this is something that I've been discussing now for several weeks where we have this multi-year wedge pattern that until the 107 area breaks down on a monthly basis, it's going to be incredibly difficult to find any type of direction from the Euro USD. It's also unclear whether or not we're going to see a breakdown before we get a retest of wedge resistance. Right now, wedge resistance comes in around 115, so that's still a possibility. We can't rule that out yet that we could see a higher euro before we see the pair break down. Now, I do still hold a bearish outlook overall in the long term, but again, there's still a possibility that we could see a surge from the euro first. It's also no surprise when we look at the DXY, which is the US dollar index, and we have this sideways movement. So I mentioned this last week to members, but you can see where this upper level right around the 101 area has served as resistance and this 9880 level was serving as support. Now, Friday looks to have closed below this. However, I'm skeptical of this move because if you actually look at the chart, this move happened within the last hour of trade. And the last hour of trade on Friday is incredibly low volume, especially given the holidays we had this past week. So as of right now, I'm going to assume that 9880 is holding on the DXY. Of course, we'll know more when Monday opens. But even if the US dollar does break 98.80, we still have this level down here around 98.30. So the bottom line, what I'm trying to point out here is that with the US dollar just moving sideways like this, it's no surprise that we've seen indecision across the FX market. So until we get some type of clear direction here from the US dollar, which again is the world's reserve currency, it's going to be difficult to gain momentum in pairs like the Euro USD, the Australian dollar, the dollar yen, etc. So going back to the Euro USD four hour time frame, for the coming week, as long as we see this 110 area hold as resistance, there is a good chance that we could see the Euro rotate lower. Now, in order for the Euro to really break out of this pattern, we do need to see a close above even this trend line that dates from this year to date low. So this 110 area is going to serve as resistance. It's going to take a daily close above that in order to send the Euro higher. As long as this region is intact as resistance, there's a good chance we could see a rotation lower into 108.90 with a break below the bottom of this channel, sending us back toward that 107 to 107.50 area, which is the bottom of that wedge that dates back to the 2000 lows. Last week, I talked about a potential head and shoulders on the British pound against the US dollar. However, as you can see, Thursday's rally somewhat negated that, even though we didn't see a move above this high back here, 
As of right now, I don't see this as a head and shoulders anymore. But at the same time, the pair is also struggling to close back above the lower portion of this channel. So until the pound versus the US dollar can close the day above this resistance level, the pair is going to come under pressure just as it did on Friday. Now as for support, I still like the idea of this short-term trend line from some of these recent lows. So as you can see, we almost have a wedge pattern forming here that could dictate the future direction for the pound. So one way to play this is to watch for a daily close above this area or below this short-term trend line. If we do get a move lower, it would expose 122 and 120, perhaps even that 117.80 area. So just like the Euro USD, I think that the pound is going to be difficult to trade because we really have no clear direction here. And this all goes back to the US dollar, the DXY chart we just looked at. So as long as the US dollar is in that sideways range, you're going to get this type of price action from pairs like the Euro and also the pound. So watch for a break from this range over the coming weeks, because I think once we get that, we could see the FX market regain some of that momentum that we saw in March. So the dollar yen spent most of last week consolidating. Even though we got this break below 106.90, you can see where the pair ended the week pretty much where it started. Furthermore, it also appears to have recovered that 106.90 level into Friday's close. So I talked about this trend line on Thursday, where as of right now, I'm just looking for a break above this trend line. So if we get a four hour close above it, that level should start to serve as support, in which case we could see a run up here to 109.30. Keep in mind that the 108 area could also serve as resistance on the way up, but it is going to take at least a four hour close above this level in order to see the dollar yen break higher. Alternatively, if we see the pair start to take out 106.50 in the coming week, that could signal weakness for a rotation lower into 105.30. Now, just like the Euro USD, we do have a larger pattern to keep an eye on here on the dollar yen. So I've been talking about this one now for most of 2020, and as you can see, we have this multi-year wedge pattern that dates back from these 2013 lows. And then we also have the upper level that extends from the 2015 high. So just like the Euro, this is going to be one to keep an eye on because if we do see a monthly close below this pattern, it would signal weakness. Whereas if we see a monthly close above it, that would signal strength and a return to some of these recent highs. All right, so this is something that I'm keeping an eye on now. And based on the fact that this is a terminal pattern, meaning that the pair will have to make a decision eventually, we are likely to see a breakout sometime in 2020. So I'm not saying that it's gonna happen this month, but it could happen sometime over the next few months. And when this thing breaks, in my opinion, it is going to break hard simply because all of this through here is just consolidation. The pair is coiling now for a move. And again, it is going to be aggressive when it happens. So it's something you're gonna to wanna to pay close attention to. And something else I've discussed too recently is the potential that this is an inverse head and shoulders on the monthly timeframe. So if it is, this would be a 20 year pattern, a 20 year reversal pattern that could signal higher prices ahead for the dollar yen. Now, of course, the neckline would be up here around 124 and it's going to take a monthly close above the top of this wedge in order for us to see the dollar yen start to break higher in order to come up here and retest the 124 neckline. So this is just something to keep an eye on for now. I'm not saying that it is going to play out, but it is something to watch because if we do see the dollar yen break to the upside of this wedge pattern, it would mean that a retest of that 124 area is much more likely. So just like the multi-year wedge, this potential inverse head and shoulders is something to keep on your radar over the coming weeks and months. The Australian dollar could be setting up for a reversal this week as the pair failed to hold on to that 6450 level. So notice how it served as support back here. It was resistance on this candle. We then got some daily closes above it. However, on the weekly time frame, we did get this bearish pin bar, which closed below 6450. And this does signal an increase in selling pressure above that area. So an immediate retest of 6450 as resistance this week could send the Australian dollar lower down here toward the 62 cent mark. Notice how it did serve as resistance for several weeks. I also like the idea of looking for shorts here because we do have this established downtrend. We got this impulsive sell-off followed by this correction. Even if I look at this on the daily time frame, even though the correction was aggressive, 
it wasn't nearly as aggressive as that sell-off. So again, I'm looking at this as downtrend established. We had this impulsive move correction, and now this latest close below 64.50 could signal weakness and a return to the 62 cent mark, perhaps even 60 cents. So another thing I like here is the fact that these levels are very well defined at 64.50, 62, and also that 60 mark. So all of these levels are well defined, which allows us to get in and out of a market like this that much easier. So I do think that the Australian dollar is one to keep an eye on as long as that 6450 level holds as resistance on a daily closing basis. And last but not least, we have gold or XAUUSD. And this chart is really simple in the sense that we did see the pair hold above 1690 on a weekly closing basis last week. So if you watched, Thursday's close actually closed below 1690. However, this is something I talked about last weekend where we looked at the weekly time frame, and I said that even though we had this bearish pin bar back here, the very next week closed back above that 1690 level. So I said that as long as gold holds 1690 support on a weekly closing basis, that the near-term uptrend is intact. And that's exactly what we got last week. So going forward, 1690 is still serving as support with resistance up around 1740-50. Now, last week was also an inside bar, which represents consolidation. So in other words, this week was nothing but consolidation within an uptrend. Notice how it formed within the range of that previous week. So if we see gold start to move up and retest 1740-50, and also start to take out some of those highs, that could be an indication that gold is ready for the next move up toward 1800. Alternatively, if we do see next week close below 1690, or even if gold takes out last week's low, that could be a signal that we're going to see a rotation lower towards 1640 and perhaps even 1550. But like I keep telling everybody that's looking for a short here, this uptrend is very much intact. So in my opinion, I've been saying this ever since the pair came off of this 1600 area down here, that looking to buy on pullbacks seems to be the way to go right now because until we see a crack in this uptrend, buying the dips is going to give you the most favorable setup. So just to kind of recap, as long as last week's low is intact, I do like gold higher for a move up to 1740-50. Now, if we do see gold take out last week's low or close next week below 1690, that could set us up for a move to 1640 or perhaps even 1550, whereas a move above 1740-50 would take on the next resistance around the 1800 level. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave your comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.